Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 19. Tesla becomes the most valuable car company in the world. Tesla semi-truck is to start volume production. Tesla Model 3 is still dominating the EV market. And SpaceX keeps making history. And full self-driving takes another big step for mankind. Taking on the roundabout. <laughs> All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Before we get started, I just want to make a big shout out to my newest Patreons. Antonio Cesar Hansen Montepigado. That's a long name. <laughs> Thank you so much, Antonio, and a big thanks to Marketing for Local Business Limited. Thank you so much, guys. Let's get into the news. Tesla's stock price made an all-time high at closing with $1,025 per share, probably because of the great sales numbers we got from China with over 11,000 deliveries. The Chinese Passenger Car Association, a government agency that tracks vehicle sales and production figures, reported Tesla Model 3 sales of 11,095 units in May making it the best-selling EV in China, the biggest car market in the world, and supposedly with their cross margin close to 40% with the Made in China Model 3 Standard Range Plus. The future is looking good for Tesla in China. And I also think the SpaceX success with the Crew Dragon flight also gave Elon Musk some credibility and had a good influence on the Tesla stock. This means that Tesla just became the most valuable car company in the world, beating Toyota of the crown. Congratulations, Tesla. And we of course got a leaked email from Elon Musk about the Tesla semi-truck. It's time to go all out and bring the Tesla semi-truck to volume production. It's been in limited production so far, which has allowed us to improve many aspects of the design. Production of the battery and powertrain would take place at Giga Nevada, with most of the other work probably occurring in other states. And we have heard before that Elon would not take the semi-truck in volume production before they have solved the battery bottleneck. So maybe this is a good indication that Tesla has actually solved the bottleneck of the battery production. Maybe the Terra factory they mentioned in the last shareholder meeting is actually a true Terra factory. That maybe one factory alone can produce almost one terawatt of batteries? Mm, or maybe I'm just hoping too much for this to be true. But time will tell. But I am very excited to see volume production of the semi-truck. And speaking of batteries, Tesla has officially received approval from Chinese Ministry of Industry and Information Technology to use lithium-ion phosphate batteries for its locally made Model 3 sedan, the battery that also doesn't have any cobalt in it. Very cool. And Mobile Energy Global MEG, has selected several manufacturers to fulfill its sales orders for electric vehicle taxis in China. Meg tapped manufacturers including Tesla to fulfill orders for EV taxis in China. Proactive Investors reports that in addition to Tesla, the EV makers include BYD, Dongfang, Nissan, Sherry, Kia and Gailey. A total of 11,254 units has been ordered. Not a bad deal for Tesla to be a part of. And the first Model Y in Canada was delivered to its owner on Tuesday, June the 9th. So now we can congratulate Tesla on officially arriving of the Model Y in Canada. And more good news from Canada, because plug-in electric car sales substantially improved in Canada during the first three months of 2020, according to the report by Electric Mobility Canada. The total volume of the electric and plug-in hybrids amounted to 11,978, which is about 50% more than in Q1 2019. Very impressive numbers. And if we look at all electric, the Tesla Model 3 is of course dominating the market. Tesla did deliver 4,025 
units of their Tesla Model 3. The Chevy Bolt was 1031, the Nissan Leaf was 701. And maybe in the future the Model Y will come in and beat them all together. Another country where Tesla is just dominating is South Korea. Tesla dominates imported EV sales in South Korea, according to the Korean BizWire. Even though South Korea has its own Korean-made EVs, which is indeed popular, Tesla is all the rage. The Korean Automobile Manufacturer Association and Korea Mobile Imports and Distributor Associations reported a 40.1% increase in EV sales between January and April, most of which have come from Tesla. The data when compared to previous year, excluding low-speed EVs and large commercial vehicles, shows that Tesla is leading South Korea's EV market. Tesla's sales have jumped from 236 cars in April of 2019 to the 4,075 cars this year. Very impressive. All over there have been 4,264 sales of imported electric vehicles. April sales of imported EVs jumped by 660% compared to the year before. Yes, EVs are coming and they're coming fast. The sales breakdown was as following. Nissan 99, BMW 53, Mercedes-Benz 23, and Jaguar 14. And then of course Tesla with its 4,075. <laughs> that is just what total dominance look like. Tesla sales in Germany will probably soon grow very fast as well with the new 7,500 euros incentive starting July the 1st. This is going to be a big deal for Tesla to really ramp up sales in Germany. And we of course need to take a look at the Gigafactory 4 in Berlin, because the first Tesla has already arrived. Or at least here we see some of the construction workers driving around on the site in a Tesla Model X. The construction of Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin is advancing rapidly and now on site obviously the result is, is noticeable, with these construction taking shape. And you can also see here on the Tesla Kate Grunheim video the endless train that is coming in with more gravel for the construction site. Tesla did send in documents for changes for the factory, one of which was a change in the overall design of the factory, thanks to which the space will be used better than previously planned. Tesla just constantly make improvements to the machine that built the machine while they are building the machine. Tesla plans to begin production of the Model Y from mid-2021, but if progress continues at such a pace, then probably the production will begin ahead of schedule. And some news about the Boring Company. The Wayne and the World Resort in Las Vegas are both seeking approval to connect to become official stops in the Boring Company's Las Vegas Convention Center transit system. The Las Vegas Convention Center CEO Steve Hill stated that this is a great step to take this from the Convention Center campus out in the community. We are talking to resort throughout the community. It's more than just two that want to do this. These are just the first that make sense because they are two of the closest hotels to the convention center. And Peugeot is coming with a new e-traveler electric van. There are two battery options for the e-traveler, a 50 kilowatt hour and a 75 kilowatt hour. That offers a range of 330 kilometers or 205 miles according to the VLTP rating system. A smart move from Peugeot to make a new electric van a market that Tesla has not yet entered. Good luck Peugeot. SpaceX is on track to complete four orbital class launches in a single month for the first time ever, an encouraging sign as it seeks to rapidly deploy its Starlink constellation. On June 3rd, the launch of 60 satellites kicked off SpaceX's potential record-breaking month while also making the first time the Falcon booster has successfully launched and landed five times, as I mentioned in my last episode. Itself coming just weeks after SpaceX has 
successfully launched NASA astronauts to the International Space Station for the first time ever. The company has done exact opposite of resting after this historic achievement. SpaceX has already launched another Starlink mission successfully on June 13th with 58 Starlink satellites and three Planet Labs Skysats and has one more schedule to launch June 24th as well as a critical US military GPS satellite launch June 30th. While the margins are extremely thin, there is still a decent chance that June 2020 will wind up to be SpaceX's first for launch month. And we of course still waiting for Bob and Doc to get safely back on Earth, and that is of course still SpaceX's top priority. But Elon also told his employees, please consider the top SpaceX priority, apart from anything that could reduce Dragon's return risk, to be Starship. So now SpaceX is going all in on Starship. So exciting. According to Elbil, the official publication of Norwegian Electric Vehicle Association Goldal Fire and Rescue in the city of Trundenlag has begun trail of a battery electric emergency vehicle based on a Chinese-made Maxus EV80 electric van. About 20 Maxus EV80s are being used by the Norwegian Post, which is working to lower carbon footprint by using more electric vehicles to deliver mails in Norway. Norway is a country that had a lot of tunnels through its many mountains. Sometimes bad things happen inside these tunnels and first response have to go in and rescue injured and put out fires and so on. Traditionally, gasoline and diesel powered trucks were the only vehicles available for such duty. But things are changing for the better. Because it is not very nice to have a diesel van running in a tunnel with toxic emissions. So nice to see Norway bringing even more EVs to the country. And Tesla is ramping up Model Y production in Fremont factory for a quarterly end push. June is ending and this means that Tesla will close the quarter. Since the Tesla factory was closed throughout April and part of May, the company is now ramping up production so that by the end of Q2 as many customers as possible get their cars. And hopefully Tesla will be just a little bit profitable in Q2, because then they will become part of S&P 500. That would probably push the stock price even higher. And something Tesla Autopilot has been very bad at is taking a roundabout. Maybe because it's an American car and there are not many roundabouts in the US. But with the latest software update, it seems like finally it can. Just take a look at this guy from Tesla Driver YouTube channel. Wow, I am... Wait, is this... If I indicate left, if this comes off here, I will be incredibly impressed. Please do. Please do. Oh, no way! No way! No way! Guys, it, it has just done a whole roundabout. I obviously had to do the indication. That is the most impressive thing it has ever done. And another video from Whole Mars on Twitter showed him telling Tesla to take him to the restaurant, and it did, with zero disengagement. Wow, the full size driving team at Tesla is just showing all the doubters that full self driving is coming, and it's coming faster than people think. That is all we have time for in this news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help out the video a lot. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I come out with news episodes every Sunday and other videos in between about Tesla and everything Elon Musk. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much. And remember, you can support the show even more for just one dollar, but it really helps out the channel a lot. So please head over to patreon.com bestandtesla if you want to support and choose your level of support and get your shout out on this channel. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for helping me keep this channel alive. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.